Okay, so um, real quick, we have homework due this Thursday, Friday. What is it? Book cover. Book cover, yep. Yeah, I have it on the board over there. That's kind of what it'll look like. Uh, that's for everybody, so I just kind of drew a line down for you guys. So book cover, get them on. Um, it could be a little paper bag, could be a socky thing, kind of whatever. Maybe there's something cool I don't even know about yet. Uh, so just get a book cover on there. I'm going to check it tomorrow or Friday. That's tomorrow, right? Thursday's tomorrow. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you haven't visited the website, here you go. Those are the different links. I'm going to get rid of those here in a minute. So um, if you don't use it, fine. It's just, it's there. Uh, Google Classroom, I updated this morning. So apologies to a few students. I, I accidentally deleted you out of the classroom. I had to add you back in. Sorry, my bad. Uh, but I'll keep posting a question of the day at some point today, I maybe mean, it'll be period two or something. So um, it's it's not graded. It's uh, in fact I just take them out of the grade book once they show up. It's just uh, for attendance purposes and whatnot for people that are online. But I just send it out to mass everyone. So just ignore it. It's supposed to be something easy that you can answer if you've been in class or watch the film. So. Uh, I think website's up to date. I think film's showing up. I think everything's there. So if there's any major issues, let me know. Because sometimes I don't even look. I just upload it and then I just forget about it. So um, yeah, so uh, we're going to get uh, some major notes today. And then hopefully we'll get to our first book assignment this week. that will be due in a couple days. So uh, it's pretty easy. It's just intro stuff to get us kind of familiar with the terminology I use and the way I write things. And so I'm, I'm very particular. It's not like algebra where you can kind of you can just kind of solve for x and you know your steps and sometimes you can kind of skip some in geometry there's it's, i know we still you know we still do some algebra stuff but there's a lot of just notational stuff like how do you write something how do you answer a question correctly it's some weird stuff it's very different math type of course so uh, let's go through a couple of vocab words today and then we'll kind of jump into some of the stuff that you probably need to know that maybe you haven't actually discussed before so uh the big thing let's talk about the word point this is a part of that little activity I did yesterday. So I want to go through the definition of it. So definition. Okay, so this is our first major vocab term. Um, I do have vocab on our tests, just so you know you're aware of that. There is always a section for vocab. That's right at the top. It's usually like multiple choice, so or not multiple choice, but eh, yeah, it's multiple choice. It's a matching kind of thing where you have some blanks, you have A's through B's, and you just kind of put them in there. So, it's always at the top. Um, I think the first test, I think I have like 10 words on there or something like that. So, uh, this could be one of them. So, uh, yeah. Can you use notes on this? This isn't tested. No. So, it's good to know. No. Yeah, no, no notes, nothing like that. Good question. So, no, no notes. So, that's something that you want to study. It's one of those things you want to read the textbook to. I know it's kind of a rarity. Most people never probably even open it until they have to when they do the assignment. But you should always kind of skim through the chapters, maybe during a study hall if you're really, really bored. Just kind of skim through it, kind of see maybe there's some vocab words. They highlight vocab words in yellow. We'll look at that maybe later today. I'll have you open up your textbook at some point if you have it. If you don't, it's not a big deal. But uh, just so you can kind of see how they mark the, the vocab words. The good thing about your textbook, even the online version, there's a dictionary in the back too. So if you look at the like the yellow word in the book and you can't decipher what the definition is, you can always go to the back and figure out what it is. So, uh, but a point. So when we did that example yesterday, I think you guys got to this example, right? With the yeah. okay, good. So I'm gonna put this back up on the board here. We're not gonna spend too long on this. This is just a kind of tie in our conversation today. So we had to be from the fountain, and then there was the the broccoli tree looking thing, and a flag. All right, so this is kind of the activity. You're supposed to find the location that met the following description that it had to be equidistant from the tree and the flag, and it had to be exactly two feet from the fountain. So that bird bath looking thing over there. That was the question that I threw out to you guys, which is kind of an open ended question. Well, this is kind of the idea. We're looking for a point, a location. So, the idea is a point is a location in space. Labeled with a capital letter. It's terrible. With a capital letter. That's the book definition. That's what they say. I'll let you, I'll let you have a little bit of time. And we're going to come back to this idea over here, this question, so we can tie it in. So it seems like it makes a little more sense to you, so you can actually see a physical example of it. Location 
space labeled with a capital letter. All right. Now, did, did I get any volunteers to throw up their answer yesterday? Did anyone walk up? Did I even give Bean you enough bends. time? Who did? Bean bends. Okay. You guys want to go throw it up there again? You wanna, if, you, if you guys don't mind, you want to grab a magnet. I have them right on the corner there. I'll take a seat here, give you a little bit of space. So, just go put them up where you think you kind of had it. Sorry, I moved them. Well, the one tree was further away last time. Yeah. It's kind of adjusted to where we need. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, so. All right, now did anyone else kind of think about the problem that wanted to throw up a dot or anything like that? Thank you for those two, but I'm volunteer again. All right, so let's go back to it. So, what you're looking at there, that dot that they threw on the board, that's a location in space. We can label them with capital letters. So this could be A and this one could be B. Not saying that either one is right or wrong. Just saying that those are the locations in space. Three-dimensional space. That's the idea. So now when you when you name a point, so let's say out of those two, which one, maybe to you, would look more accurate? I'm not gonna say it's right or wrong, just which one would you agree with? A or B? Right now, A. Okay. Before it was B because the tree was high higher. Okay. So now, why A? Let's talk about that. Why? So, please? It looks equal distance. Yeah, equal distance, right? They took equal distance, made a new word equidistant, right? It has to be the same length, right? So, but, and then the second stipulation had to be two feet from the fountain, and the ballpark. Let's say that's two feet for A. So, if A is the correct answer, here's how you name it. You actually have to write the word point and write A after it. That's how you name an answer. So let's say one of the questions on your test or homework was name a point that meets this description. And they, they give you a couple things. This is how you answer it. I know it seems silly. Some people just want to put the A. They say, oh, it's A. It's point A. There's a big difference there. So you have to write the word point. Now what this is called, this is called notation. This is how you answer questions. I'm a I'm very particular that you answer it the correct way. So when you name point, you have to write the word point and then put the letter after it. Now, okay, agree with those? What if I told you both those dots were wrong? Not the points I was looking for. Now what? Even though you're thinking, what those? Hey, now I'm not being like particular, like, oh, it's off by a millimeter. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's way off. Do you have to hold it above the, or button? Please, go up there. Hold, hold it where you think, because I think you just nailed it. space. Not saying that A is wrong. The one location I was looking for is if you think outside the box, you could be out here, two feet from the fountain, but exactly the same distance to both. In geometry, you have to think in three space. You can't just be two-dimensional just on a flat marker board. Okay? It's super hard. I'm not saying that A is wrong. A could be perfectly fine. But what I'm telling you is that there's an infinite number of answers to that problem. So imagine that the fountain, the fountain there, that bird bath, is the center of a basketball, right? So it's at this very center, the core. And the basketball has a radius from the center to the outside where the, the skin is of the basketball is exactly two feet. So you got the sphere going around the fountain. You could have any point on the sphere, and they would still be the same distance from these two. So that's the idea. It's, it's a really weird concept when you start to think about it, that there's an infinite number of answers to a problem. Um, not just saying that you know A is wrong, but you have to think outside the box sometimes. That's where geometry can get really kind of weird. You have to see things in almost three dimensions sometimes. So, is there any questions on what a point is, though? Perfect. All right, let's get to our second word here. We need to talk about a line. This. All 
All right, a line. And this is, again, this is going to be the definition of it. And we'll go through a notation how to write it. Now, what I need you to know is that there is three types of lines. This is, this is the first one. I know that seems really weird. There is three types. This is going to be the first one. It's self-entitled. It's just called a line. The other ones are called a segment, which we'll get to tomorrow. So don't worry about that. And then the other ones are ray. But this is the first one. It's called a line. Now, the definition of it. is the distance between two points extended in both directions without limit. points extended in both directions without limit. and then we'll really start to break your brain a little bit by, by how these definitions all fit together. There's some wild stuff you'll see later with this. But distance between two points. So you need two points, so we can pick A and B, okay? There, do you agree that there is a distance between them? Yes. Okay, so that would be considered a line if, if you extend it further in both directions. So you go past A and you go past B, and I go without limit. Now, how do I show that it keeps going? Arrows. Arrows, you're absolutely right. It needs arrows on it, right? That's a little notational thing. You need to have arrows. You have to show that it keeps going. If there's no arrows, we assume it stopped, okay? Now, the book shows it differently. Sometimes the book won't show the arrows. They, they're, gonna, they're gonna say in the directions, assume that all lines are, you know, in fact, lines, they're not segments where they stop. So, how do we write that answer? There's a couple different ways. So. The different notational ways you can answer. So if you need to say, hey, what's the line that connects A and B? So this is how you say it. You write A and B, both points, back to back. I don't care which order you write it in. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be alphabetical. You can write either one, but you have to like push them side by side. And then you have to draw a little arrow above them. That's notation. Now, that is not the only way to write a line. It has to have two points. It's a part of the definition. So you have to have two points in the name of it, right? Unless they use an italicized letter on the line somewhere. So sometimes the book will show this like italicized like L, like a, almost a cursive letter, an M, an L, some other letter. And you'll tell, it will be at the end, there won't be a dot next to it. That could be the name of the line. So now how you name it when it's labeled like that, you actually have to write the word line and then put the little italicized or cursive letter that they use. So it's either you do this or you do this. I don't care which one you do. Don't mix them together though. I'll always have some person on the test that got confused or you know they forgot because it's been a week or so and then they try to do this. I don't want that, right? You're mixing both things together. It's either just line AB with the arrows above it or just line L because you use the cursive letter. I'm usually, they don't use a lot of italicized letters. It's just when the picture's really complicated, sometimes it's easier just to use the one symbol instead of using two letters. All right, questions on the line. Now, here's my next question for you. Looking at that, can you measure it? No. No, why? 
Because it goes on forever. Exactly. There's no length to it. It's, it's infinite in length. You can't measure that. I know there's a distance between A and B that is measurable. Like if I got rid of these arrows, you could measure the distance directly between it. But that doesn't represent the entire line. Now, it doesn't matter the thickness of it either. There is, by definition, there is no thickness of the line itself. It's infinitely small. Uh, same with like the points themselves. I know those dots are really big. There's no thickness to it. It's not like a, a geographical map that you use for a city where you know bigger dots mean bigger cities. It doesn't have anything to do with geometry. So uh, the dots are themselves infinitely small. They just represent that single pinpoint location that you're talking about. Okay, so that's a line. Now, there's three types. We're going to get the other types later. They just want to get you started with this one so you're not confused. So, again, it's the distance between two points and we extend it further. So no measurement. Now, the last vocabulary I want to talk today, and then we'll start mixing these all together and talking about them. The last definition, the last vocab word, is called a plane. Okay, it's called a plane, not an airplane, but a geometrical plane. So we're going to go through the definition of it. Okay, so a geometrical plane is a limitless flat surface that contains three non collinear points. <laughs> That's every time we get to a new word, there's just more and more vocab words that they just keep throwing at you. So let's talk about it. Limitless definition. Let me throw it out. Without end. Exactly. Nice definition. Flat surface. So to me, a flat surface would be like the marker board, the little piece of paper that's on you, your desk that's in front of you. That's a flat surface, right? So it's limitless. So that means extent. So if you have a really good imagination, imagine you're looking at the little piece of paper in front of you, and suddenly the paper just keeps extending. So if you ever watched the movie, you like. Uh, Inception, where they can kind of extend planes further. So you have a really good imagination, you can see that. So it's a limitless flat surface, so the marker board keeps continuing. And it contains three non-collinear points. Now we've got a new word there, non-collinear. What does that mean? What is, let's start here first. What does collinear mean? Start there. Then we can add the word non in front of it, because that means not. Collinear. What do you think? What's your instinct tell you? What do you think? Co means what? What does co mean when you throw it in front of something? We're too shy. What do you think? What's your instinct? What's co? Is a pair, right? Pair. Co-lining means on the same line. So co-lining, pairing up on the same line, but now we're non-collinear. So three dots that are not in a straight line. So if I were to throw another dot up on the board, let's say letter C, point C, let's throw it up here. This is point C. Is point C on line A to B? No. No, it's definitely not. So those three dots are non-collinear. All of them are not on the same line. I know two of them will always be, duh. Between any two points, there is always a line that connects them. But three, non-collinear. Those three are not all in a straight line. Those three dictate the plane that we're looking at. The marker board is the only plane that can touch all three of them at the same time. A flat surface, not a curve. Okay. If they're all three in a line, then there's an infinite number of planes. 
That's why they had to have it non-collinear, because let's say I use D, E, and F. D, E, and F. And they're all on a straight line. Are all three on the marker board? Yes. Yeah, so they're, they're touching a plane. You're like, word, it, a plane touches a D, E, and F. But it's not the only plane that does. So I'll use my little yellow piece of paper here. Imagine this is a plane, flat surface. This is a different surface than the marker board. I could hit all three if I just extended it. That's a different plane completely. Like this one's coming out at you. I could have a plane going this way, like diagonal right through the board, going through the back wall. Like there's an infinite number of planes. I could just keep rotating 360 all the way around it. But by putting them not in a straight line with each other, the marker board is the only one that could touch all three at the same time. That's why they're very specific. They have to be non-collinear to be a specific plane. So like, for instance, um, just as honest question, how many people have been drawing some of these pictures on their paper? Okay, so there's at least some of you have. So all of you have different points in your different planes. Well, all of those different points are making a new plane because there's only one plane that can touch all of them. So it's, it's kind of weird when you start to think about the definitions of what come out here. Um, these are the three main objects, point, a line, and a plane, that make everything in geometry. Everything. The different shapes you can think of, triangles, you know, circles, uh, dodecahedrons, very just wild pictures. But it requires these three objects to do it. Okay, is there any questions with some of the words we've discussed up to this point? Okay, I know we've got like a minute left here. Uh, what's our assignment tomorrow? Book we'll cover, it's tomorrow or Friday. So whatever day you want to bring it in. I need to see the physical book in front of you. I want to see the book covers on it, and I want to hear your book number one more time. I know that's silly, but it's just a triple check to make sure you have the right book still. Um, if you find any textbooks in the hallways or underneath your desks at some point, and when you go to other classes, bring them back to me. Okay? You might get a reward for it. Uh, tomorrow, expect an assignment in class tomorrow. It'll be based on these objects, like look at a picture, name a plane, name a line, uh, name the point that meets this definition. We're going to throw in some new vocabularies tomorrow. I don't know if we'll necessarily get to the other two types of lines. That might be maybe a Friday or a Monday kind of a thing. But I want to talk about when you look at a homework problem in your textbook, what is it going to look like? What do you need to be prepared for? Uh, so I'll pull a couple problems from the book. I'll throw some pictures up on the board so you can see what I'm talking about. Hopefully that made sense to you. Hopefully it's starting to connect the dots a little bit. You feel a little bit better about it. Um, we haven't named a plane yet. That's something we'll talk about, the notation, you know, how you name it like this, how you would answer a question. We'll do that tomorrow. Uh, but I think we have the basics. We've got the, the basic definitions down. So, all right, but that's it for today. That's all I got.